Hi everyone, I'm Steve here with David Wright. David is a personal trainer at Fitness for 10 in Carson City. Thanks for being here, David. Thanks for having me, Steve. Okay, we're going to talk about, you know, it, it feels like we kind of talk about things in multiple different ways, kind of similar topics. But when you start an exercise program, and, and you and I want to motivate everyone to start an exercise program. It's never too late. I don't care how old you are. And I see people that can barely walk into the gym, but they are walking into the gym and it takes them a long time. Yeah. Um, and you see people in our gym too. If I'm seeing them, you're seeing them, but they're not giving up and they're trying to improve no matter what their age is, they're going to try and walk into the gym a little better the next day. Now, also, if you're an advanced lifter, you want to be able to measure your progress. So either way, we're going to talk about how to measure your progress and how to know that you're going in the right direction. Because sometimes you might be working really, really hard, but you might be overtraining. You might be eating wrong. And even though you're trying really hard and you're putting a lot of effort into your exercise and your diet, you might be going in the wrong direction. So we want to make sure our clients are going in the right direction. Right, David? Yeah, it's really important because, you know, what happens a lot of times with, especially with people who are just beginning, but even people who aren't just beginning, you know, maybe they have specific goals. Um, a lot of people have a specific goal in their mind. Um, they may not go to a trainer or anything like that, but they do come into the gym for a reason. Nobody just kind of stumbles in here because they, they like the building on the outside type of thing. So when you come into any health club, it doesn't matter if it's ours or any other one, um, you know, you've got a goal that in your mind, why are you there? And so one of the things when you do that is, uh, I'm going to have a, a one example that's very common is, I'm going to go to the gym because I want to lose weight. That's a very common thing that people want to do. It's not the only reason, but that's a very common one. So just with that example alone, people will come into the gym. Um, they a lot of times will read things online or watch different videos, which is a great resource, by the way, depending on whom and what you're watching. Um, so that's a whole nother video. But, um, you know, they don't really think of at that time, and it's fairly normal, they don't really think of how am I going to monitor what I'm doing and if it's working. Now, one way people would say is the scale. Am I going down on the scale or am I not? It seems like a simple way to see, am I getting more fit? Now, if we're just talking about weight in general, yes, that scale is going to tell you, you weigh 195 today and tomorrow you weigh 192. So clearly you lost three pounds. So that's one way to look at it. But there's a much bigger piece of this that, you know, if you're coming in here, you're wanting to, you know, lose weight. Generally, you're also wanting to lose body fat because that's why we look at ourselves and go, gosh, I need to slim down a little bit. That's not going to really tell you if you're losing body fat or, you know, what that variance is. Heck, it could be water weight for all you know. So one of the things is we need to have a way for the clients or members of the gym. When they come in, they have this goal. How are you going to measure progress? One way here at Fitness for 10 and Carson, you know, we have our Staiku 3D body scanner machine. You know, we just got it. It's a fantastic tool for us to help not only set that goal to be a realistic, you know, fat loss goal, if that's the case, um, taking a look at the you know, calories and, and basal metabolic rate, all these different cool things, but also measuring your your different body circumferences, you know, from your arms and abdomen, all sorts of cool stuff. So there's a huge tool that we have here to be able to help you do that. But even if we didn't have that, you as just walking in the gym, you need to just understand what your specific goal is. And, you know, talk to a trainer would be a great step to, to start with that and, and how you can have that help measuring. Because what tends to happen, Steve, and I'm sure you've seen it a lot too, is, you know, someone comes in the gym, they want to lose weight or they want to gain muscle. They're here for a month, two months, three months, six months even. Go, gosh, you know, I don't feel any different. I don't feel like I look any different. And then they just stop coming because, you know, it's 
clearly not working, all of these things, it might very well be working. It's just not working in the way that they thought. So you really have to have small benchmarks to go, okay, am I making it to these benchmarks? And then once I'm there, okay, what's the next one? And people don't often do that. And that really leads to that kind of a disappointment in themselves when they probably don't have a reason to be disappointed at all. It's just they didn't have a benchmark um, to really measure, are they making progress or not? Yeah. And, you know, you mentioned uh, the scale and I, I'm, I've, I've got uh, some skin calipers here. I'm going to grab them and show you what those are. But there's a number of ways and weight is not always the best way to monitor your progress. If you feel better, you know what? You might feel better, but you might weigh more. Now, if you weigh 400 pounds, yeah, you need to lose some weight. If you sure. weigh 400 pounds, yeah, you probably need to lose half of that. You probably need to lose 200 pounds and get down to at least 200, depending on how tall you are. So yes, that's an easy one. The, the, the scale is easy to monitor where measurements, if you weigh 400 pounds, I mean, I don't know, there's probably really no reason to take measurements until you can at least measure something that's not, you know, you know, you know, hanging over the, the measuring tape. Mm -hmm. So in that case, yeah, the scale is good, but you might gain weight and feel better and you might be leaner and your measurements might go down. So, um, with the body scanner that you talked about that we have in, uh, at the fitness for 10 in Carson, that thing is great because it's going to take your measurements. I like how it takes measurements. It's going to take measurements in the exact same spot each time. So, uh, in that case, it's simple. You just do it at the same time. And whatever you did that morning, you do the same thing. So if you didn't eat breakfast and you did the body scan at 10, do the same thing. Uh, you know, you drank, you know, two glasses of water. Okay. Drink two glasses of water again. So try to be consistent there, but I'm going to show you what uh, skin calipers look like because there's easy things. If you're exercising at home, there's some easy things that you can do at home. Uh, one is a tape measure, measure your arms, measure your chest, measure in different areas, measure your hips, measure your thighs, um, measure your waist. Now, it's hard to do it exactly perfect every time like a body scanner, but you can get pretty close and know you're going to know if you lost an inch off of some body part or area. You're also going to know if you're trying to put muscle on if your biceps got a quarter of an inch bigger. But let me show you something that's really inexpensive. I'm going to grab it. Hang on one second. This is skin calipers, and what you do is you take a pinch, you know, on, on your chest or your triceps, your abdomen, your, your thigh, and this is something that you can do, you know, take an average on the quad or wherever it's asking, and just do a, a, a search online, and it will give you a formula to where you can put the measurements in, and it'll give you an estimate of what your body composition is. And you get good at this. These are pretty accurate. You know, it's not going to get the, the visceral fat, you know, fat inside uh, uh, underneath that's not subcutaneous, but this is a pretty good way of monitoring your progress. Uh, so I really recommend, you know, this is plat. Th these are not expensive, but it's really an effective way or something that you can add to uh, the scale where you're, stepping on the scale and also getting that measurement. And along with the measuring, you know, with the tape measure, you're going to know if you're making progress and you can't leave out, Hey, I'm feeling good. The scale is not right. going to tell you that you may lose weight and not feel good. You may gain weight and feel good. So how you feel, how your body's moving, it matters also. So, uh, David, any last thoughts that you would add to, uh, you know, different advice that you would give people who want to measure their progress and, and know how they're doing? Yeah, I, I would say, you know, the last thing I probably have along those lines right now is, you know, kind of going back to the scale, because the scale is is the, uh, the good and the evil for everybody. And, and what I would say is stay away from measuring your weight 
every day. There are people that do that every single day. And that's okay, depending on where you're at in, you know, fitness journey. Myself, I have to weigh myself every day as a competitor getting ready for a show. Most people are not competitors getting ready for a show. And what tends to happen is, you know, that first thing in the morning when you go weigh yourself and you're going, man, I gained a pound, lost a pound, whatever the case might be, discouragement, um, you know, all these different things, thinking, oh, gosh, this isn't working. To your point, Steve, you could gain a little bit of weight or in some cases a lot of weight, depending on if what your what your needs are and feel so much better. Or, you know, if your your goal and your your need is to lose weight, lose body fat, you could feel much better. It's going to be different for everybody. So, yeah, don't don't rely strictly on a scale. It's a tool, just like a lot of other things are just one small tool in a big tool chest. So, you know, don't step on that scale every single day and depend on that to give you that gauge of where you're at. Like Steve talked about a couple of different ways of, of measuring body composition and your measurements, doing those things and doing them, you know, maybe in a set, um, you know, time period, you know, every two weeks or every, you know, a certain time period that works for you where you'll see different changes and that will be motivational versus stepping on the scale every day and going, I give up because it hasn't changed to where I want it to, you know, get away from that idea and just, you know, again, listen to yourself. And I think that's the biggest thing here is listen to yourself and how you feel. And I try to implore that with my clients. How are you feeling? Yes, they may have lost weight or they might have gained a little bit because of muscle gain. How do you feel? Because that's the real gauge of anything. Doesn't matter how you look is one thing, how much you weigh and all these other things are included. But how does your body feel? How do you mentally feel? What do you feel like? Because that's the most important thing of all. That's why you come here to begin with or start any fitness journey or health journey to begin with is because you want to feel a certain way. And so that's got to be the goal is understanding when you get to that feeling going, yeah, you know what? I'm doing the right thing. So I would just say definitely pay more attention to, again, your body and yourself and how you feel. Yeah. Um, I, I also weigh myself every day and do certain things every day, but I'm not going to freak myself out. I've been doing this for, you know, 50 years. Right. So right. you're a competitor. Um, I've been an athlete 40 years ago. Um, but um, you, you just got to take it with a grain of salt if you're doing something like that. Right. So, um, David, how do people follow you on social media? So I have two uh, Instagram channels you can follow. One is my personal page, which is my fitness journey, my transformation, my show prep uh, for my upcoming show on the 28th um, and my previous show that I just did. So that's on Instagram at David Wright underscore fitness and uh, at Wright Fitness Training for my personal training page. That's the 28th of what month? Uh, September. Okay. So this might be out by then, probably not, but right around that time, just so you all know. All right, David. Uh, so thank you so much for being with us and we will talk to you next time. Thanks, Steve.